Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, uh, I'm going to talk to you about two books by the British horror author Guy N. Smith. So Guy N. Smith was a hugely successful British horror author in the 70s and 80s in particular, who wrote very trashy, pulpy, um, you know, short horror books. So he was never as successful as someone like James Herbert. But certainly as a kid and a teenager, I remember his books always being on the shelves of of bookstores and and in newsagents and things like that. So they, you know, they tended to be short, less than 200 pages. And he wrote a lot of them. So so he really, really churned them out. Um, And as a result for, you know, at one time, you could always find his books in, in charity shops. Nowadays, they're much more difficult to come by, um, not least because there's some sort of, um, there's something going on at the moment, and a lot of his books, which were in print on Kindle, are now out of print, so they're they're no longer available, there's only a handful you can get on Kindle, uh, which I think has driven up the price of um, of some of the you know the old paperback copies, I think there is a, a, a like a new wave of Kindle editions of his books coming, um, but but it doesn't seem to be here yet. So I, I look forward to to that happening because I really quite enjoy his work, even though it is objectively uh, often <laughs> often quite bad. So what I wanted to talk about in this video was was two of his books: his first book and his last book. So his his first book uh, was a book called Wealth by Moonlight, uh, which was published in 1974, uh, and which I read last month. Uh, and his final book was a book called Beheaded, which came out in 2021. Um, so just after his death, so so Smith sadly died in in 2020. Um, Beheaded was published in 2021, as I say, and that was co-authored with a a younger British horror author called J. R. Park who's published a a few books on his own um, and is also, I believe, one of the owners of uh, Sinister Publishing, which is the the publisher that published that book. So I'm not sure if it was always meant to be co-written by the two of them um, or if, uh, you know, Smith hadn't quite finished the manuscript and J.R. Park you know, finished it off after Smith's death. Um, but it was an it was an entertaining read anyway. So that's quite an impressive writing career, isn't it? 47 years, so from, from 74 to 2021. I think there's not that many authors who, who have consistently published books um, for as long as that. Um, and, and maintained the quality of those books as well. Now, the quality of Smith's books is not great, but it is consistent. <laughs> it's consistent. They are consistently at about the same quality throughout that forty-seven year period. Um, certainly, all the ones I, I've read have been anyway. Um, so let me talk to you briefly about each of the books, and then I wanted to do a bit of a comparison and and think about how how Smith's writing, you know, perhaps changed over the time, um, and what common themes there were between the two books. So, so Werewolf by Moonlight is a very kind of boilerplate werewolf book. It draws on a lot of the kind of common tropes and things like that you see in in werewolf novels uh, and movies. So, it's about a young guy in a rural community in the in the north of England um, who gets bitten by a dog which has in turn been bitten by a werewolf and he gets turned into a werewolf so there's a lot of stuff in this book about him trying to kind of contain that trying to you know keep himself locked up when there's a full moon and that kind of thing and and failing to do so Um, and there's also a lot of the kind of animalistic sex and violence that you often get in in werewolf stuff so it it was a fun read in common I think with pretty much all of the the Smith stuff I've read it's at its best when he's doing sex and violence. So violence he does he does pretty well and he does it well even in this first book. Sex he does quite badly but in an entertaining way. So the, the sex in Guy Smith's books is is always explicit, usually somewhat ridiculous, um, but it's quite entertaining to read as a result. It's the bit in between the sex and violence where he falls down a bit and his his plots can be, well, they are are always very derivative and can be a bit ploddy. Um, uh, But they, you know, they carry you from from one explicit scene to the next. Um, So, yeah, so that's Well Off by Moonlight. So Beheaded... Um, very different in in concept, but diff- but but similar in style. So beheaded is about this this young woman Angela, who's a potter, who lives in a house where a hundred years before um, this guy um, murdered somebody and and beheaded them, and then committed suicide before he could be hung. Um, 
and the 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 locals and again it's set in a in a small community the locals believe that this guy haunts the haunts the cottage anyway angela's husband who's who's a horrible like abusive guy gets killed and beheaded um, and it's about um, Angela being interrogated by the police and, and various other things going on as she tries to, to figure out what's happening. But it's also about her, her burgeoning romance with her neighbour, um, who, funnily enough, is called Ollie, um, and his kind of involvement in the investigation and things like that. Uh, and there are, you know, beyond that that first death, there are more deaths. So like... Um, like Wealth by Moonlight, it's quite derivative. So that kind of trope of, um, you know, a terrible thing has happened in the past and, you know, the repercussions echo into the present um, is, you know, it is a common one in horror. Um, and also, like Wealth by Moonlight, the, the violent scenes are really good. There's some really good uh, kind of gore scenes in this book, um, which are which are effectively written. They're silly, but, but they're effective and, and enjoyable as a result. Um, like Wolf by Moonlight, it's also got some very cheesy sex scenes, um, but I didn't necessarily mind those. What it's also got is a, is a bit of a weird twist ending, um, which which I didn't particularly like, um, but I'd enjoyed the book up to that point, so, so I, I you know I I, I let it off um, because the rest of the book was quite fun. Um, I think overall I would say Beheaded is better than Werewolf by Moonlight. It's the the plot's a bit tighter. Um, the structure is a bit more interesting because you've got a kind of um, a series of flashbacks um, as this kind of interrogation goes on. So that worked quite well. Um, and I think I, I don't know if this is Smith's writing kind of maturing over time or if it's J.R. Park's involvement, but just the prose I, th- I thought flowed a bit more easily um, than the prose in in Wealth by Moonlight. So um, I think you know Smith. Whilst I say he's he's kind of consistently okay throughout his career, I, I think he you know he he refined his craft over those decades of writing. Um, the other thing that's quite fun in Beheaded is so Smith's most most successful and, and well known series of books by far is the Crab series. So he wrote a number of books in this series, which is about a, a series about giant crabs attacking small communities um, in in the UK and also I think in one of them in Australia. Um, those books are really, really fun. And there's references to, to those books um, in Beheaded. So one of the characters, who's an older guy, has been... And I'm not sure, I didn't check if he was actually a character in any of the Crabs books. But he's fought giant crabs in the past and has got like a giant crab claw um, on it, hanging on his wall um, to, to commemorate his victory over the crabs. Um, so yeah, so that was that was quite entertaining. And it, and it struck me reading it that the thing that makes a Guy and Smith book really good like stand out from the rest is the concept so the crabs books are definitely my favorite of his books and they're fa- the, their favorites because the concept is so simple so enjoyable and lends itself to, so well to scenes of sex and violence you know giant killer crabs you know you can't really go wrong with that whereas the werewolf book is you know it's a bit derivative it's a bit like other werewolf books you've read um, and beheaded again was you know it was the the storyline was fine, but it wasn't as much fun as Killer Crab. So I think Smith is at his best when he's got a, a really appealing concept and just runs with it. Um, in terms of similarities between the books, I've kind of touched on those a little bit, but I think the small town setting is is definitely one. And I think through pretty much all the the Smith books I've read that's been the case he doesn't tend to write books set in cities he, he focuses on small communities and you do get to know some of the other you know people in those communities as well another theme that I think is quite common in his books is kind of marital strife um so in this one you know you've got an, in beheaded sorry you've got an abusive husband but you've got stuff about you know relationships people having affairs and things like that in wealth by moonlight as well and maybe he uses that as an, as an excuse to throw some extra sex scenes in um but it definitely seems to be a theme that he returned to um again and again um so yeah both of these books were fun if you like you know, cheap, cheesy horror. Um, I would definitely recommend Guy and Smith. He's he was by no means the best author in the world. Certainly not the best British horror author. Um, but if you're after a quick, fun, enjoyable read, particularly perhaps something for Garb August, um, then you can't really go far wrong with Guy and Smith. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know in the comments if you're a Guy and Smith fan. Let me know what your favourite Guy and Smith book is. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. 
and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.